Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Spicy Tuna Rice Bowl. That's right, welcome to another installment of recipes that Chef John makes when he's short on time and inspiration, but he still wants something delicious and nutritious and comforting to eat. And this simple but amazing Spicy Tuna Rice Bowl is absolutely perfect for those occasions. So with that, let's stop talking in the third person and go ahead and get started by making a batch of really nice rice. And for that, I'm going to add one cup of long grain rice to this ancient enamel glazed cast iron pot. But any similarly sized pot will work as long as it's heavy duty. Okay, that's one of the keys to making really good rice. And then to that, we will add a cup and a half of nice cold fresh water. And by the way, there is no need to wash or rinse the rice first. I paid for all that starch and I want to eat all of it. But what we will do is settle that rice down by giving this a few swirls before we head to the stove. And if you're wondering what that little brown thing that's floating is, I'm not sure, but I really hope it's just a piece of rice husk. In any event, I removed it on the way to the stove. And what we'll do is place this over medium high heat and wait for it to come up to a simmer. And in the meantime, what we won't do is stir this. In fact, at no point during this cooking process will this rice get stirred. Oh, it's gonna get fluff with a fork later, but at no point do we stir rice while it's cooking, which is hard for me because I love to stir things. And then what's gonna happen just as soon as this stuff starts to boil is that we're gonna turn our heat down to low Cover this tightly and let it simmer on low for exactly 15 minutes. And then what we'll do while that's working is go ahead and assemble the rest of our ingredients, most of which you're already going to have in your pantry. And we will start with some canned, or in my case, jarred tuna, preferably packed in olive oil, because that stuff generally tastes better and a little extra fat's always nice. And before we add the rest of our ingredients, I think it's a good idea if we break this up a little bit. And by the way, if you want to be a little more civilized, feel free to use a couple forks. But since I'm moving a camera around, I thought it would be a great idea to have tuna and olive oil all over my fingers. And then what we'll do once we have that not so carefully crumbled is go ahead and toss in some red bell pepper, along with some jalapeno pepper. I'm also going to toss in some sliced green onions. And then for our very simple dressing, we're going to do some seasoned rice vinegar in a fairly generous amount. Then we'll also do a couple tablespoons of soy sauce, as well as a little touch of sesame oil followed by as much hot sauce as you see fit. And in case you're keeping score at home, I'm using sriracha. And then last but not least, the freshly squeezed juice of half a lemon. And that's it, once everything's in, we'll just take a fork and mix this until thoroughly combined. And what's very cool about this recipe is that theoretically, the 15 minutes it takes the rice to cook should be just enough time to get this all together. In fact, I always try to turn it into some kind of game, like I'm in one of those spy movies and there's a bomb connected to a timer, that's gonna go off in 15 minutes and destroy the world if I don't complete the task. So just an idea to make dicing a pepper seem a little more exciting. But anyway, speaking of timers, once our 15 minutes is up and the timer rings, what we'll do is immediately turn off the heat, at which point we're just gonna let our rice sit there resting for 10 minutes. All right, so do not remove the lid and do not peek. That rice needs to sit for 10 minutes to finish cooking. And yes, if you didn't finish your prep in the 15 minutes and the world blew up in our imaginary scenario, you do have 10 minutes here to finish things off. And then what we'll do after our rice has rested for 10 minutes is uncover it and give it a quick fluffing with a fork. Okay, what we're doing here is releasing all that steam to stop the cooking process, as well as start to separate the grains by breaking up all the bigger clumps. And then after about 30 seconds of fluffing, we can go ahead and transfer this in and then simply stir it all together with a spoon until everything's perfectly and evenly mixed. And you'll see, even though this looks a little sticky and clumpy when you start, as you stir and all that dressing gets mixed in, virtually every single one of those grains of rice is going to separate, not to mention soak in a little bit of that dressing. And if everything goes according to plan, as soon as everything's been mixed in, it should hopefully look something like this. And at this point, all we have to do is taste it for seasoning, since you might want it spicier or a little bit saltier, which you could do with more soy or a little pinch of salt. But mine was perfect, which means we can grab a bowl and serve it up. And I decided to finish mine off with a few Korean chili flakes and a few more sliced green onions. And that's it, my spicy tuna rice bowl is ready to enjoy. And it might be kind of hard to see, but what we have here is pretty much equal parts rice and tuna by weight, which for me gives us the perfect balance between protein and starch. And while this might remind some people of a fried rice dish, this really is significantly lighter and actually very low on the fat content. But that doesn't mean it's not satisfying. It is very satisfying, not to mention, like most rice dishes, very comforting. 
Oh, and another one of the many great things about this recipe, it's perfect to enjoy warm like this, but also fantastic at room temp, as well as cold like a rice salad. Okay, so the serving temp is up to you. I mean, you are after all the Heidi Fleiss of your spicy tuna rice. And speaking of tricks, if you use a little less dressing and or use a shorter grain of rice and make this a little stickier, you can actually press it together and form it into balls, and then maybe roll it in sesame seeds, which makes for an incredible handheld snack, which is perfect for bringing to work, or even something like a picnic. And I forget the Japanese name for those, but I know they do have a name. And there are many casual comfort food recipes that are fast, cheap, and easy to put together, and many of them taste like it. But not this stuff. All right, this stuff is so satisfying and bright and flavorful and vibrant. It does not taste at all like something you just threw together because you didn't know what else to make, which in reality is probably exactly what we did. But anyway, that's it, what I'm calling a spicy tuna rice bowl, or as we called it before the millennials were editing all the food magazines, spicy tuna rice. But whether you serve it in a bowl or on a plate, or like I said, roll it into balls, which is also great, no matter how you enjoy this, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.